folks. So this is part three of four for the Wexler test. We'll see how long this takes, but I'm I'm just trying to make sure that you have all the content you need or could ever want. Yeah, that didn't. Okay, I'm gonna try ignoring him. <laughs> and just record. I let's just through these. Okay. So uh, performance subtest. So you've got picture completion, which shows a picture with an important detail missing. Unfortunately, because of copyright restrictions, I can't reproduce a picture here. However, um, if you Google ways uh, picture completion, examples will come up. Anyway, um, yeah, so or subjects have uh, 20 seconds to identify the missing detail. So this taps attention to detail and scanning, but it doesn't require you to comprehend like a set words or deal with that aspect. Uh, so it's tries to be verbal free. That's the goal of these, essentially to complement the verbal subtest. So digital symbol coding, uh, you're presented with an array of numbers with matched abstract symbols as a key and then multiple empty boxes with the numbers below. You have to complete as many as possible of the numbered boxes with the appropriate key in two minutes. So it, it taps processing speed and attention to detail, and it is personally my least favorite to do because it's hard. Um, there are much more arduous versions um, in the Farm Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. They have one in everything but the most recent edition, which is online, um, that was eight minutes of matching number strings to words. It is hell on earth for me, but it, it's a really good measure of persistence and uh, it actually predicts health outcomes. It's a pretty decent proxy for conscientiousness and a very specific kind of conscientiousness, which is, I think really cool. They used it for the Marines, uh, like the Marines were the last uh, branch to drop it because it is really tough and taxing. It's effective, but so yeah, so it's like the longer this goes on, the more of an endurance piece it is. And so two minutes is, is still really hard, personally. Anyway, everybody has their own challenges on tests, but for me, this is mine. All right, so block design. So you're presented with an array of blocks on a card. And so you give nine blocks to the subject and they must reproduce the block array in a sh as short a time as possible. So this is a time test, so shorter time equals more points and this taps visual motor skills and uh, processing speed. So the input is visual, so you're given a picture and you have to produce it tactilely. And so this is probably the best test for nonverbal concept formation and abstract thinking. It is as close to language free as possible you still have to understand the instructions, but it really tries to tap into this different aspect. And it's great. Again, for copyright <coughs> copyright reasons, I can't provide examples. However, YouTube that has them. So I encourage you to um, check those out. I find it very helpful to see these. So matrix reasoning is new to the ways. It's very similar to uh, the Binet matrix reasoning test. It looks a lot like the Raven's matrices. Um, and so you're presented with a nonverbal sequence of matrices. And what I mean by matrix is think like a tic-tac-toe board where there are little patterns in each. You have to fill, figure out what piece is missing. Uh, and this is, I know I keep saying like certain ones are my favorite and least favorite, but I really like this one because Again, this is for, for personal reasons. I enjoy this one. Uh, it also, I, I think it's, it, it tends to work really well for prediction, but uh, this is my favorite because I do best on this. It's like I crush it, which is really fun. Uh, there are color versions of this. There are non-color. And I know that having a favorite, like having a personal favorite, like I, is, you know, we're people, we're human. I enjoy it. Um, and I imagine that if I did really badly on it, I would like it a lot less, personally. But it still has really great psychometric properties. And so I imagine that even if I did badly, I would still endorse it professionally. 
Um, but it's really fun. You should check it out. Again, copyright. <sighs> this is the challenge with videos. Um, they fall under kind of a different fair use aspect. And these are really strongly protected. Yeah, so I apologize. Um, but yeah, so this taps nonverbal logic, abstract reasoning, and inductive re It's It's dope. Again, that's clearly the personal opinion I have, but I like it. Um, so next, we've got picture arrangement. And so you're presented with an array of pictures similar to a comic strip, but they're out of order. And so you're asked to arrange them in an order that makes sense. And so you have to pretty much put the order of them as quick as possible to have an order that essentially makes sense. So this taps social reasoning, nonverbal reasoning, sequential reasoning, cause and effect relationship. So it's it taps a lot of pieces. You almost have to put a guessing parameter in based on the number of different combinations, which I think is kind of cool. Like jumping way back to IRT. Um, but in general, you have to come up with an, a cohesive narrative. Okay, so object assembly. So you're presented with a set of puzzle pieces. So these are manipulative. So like you can actually like touch them and the subject has to arrange, like solve the puzzle in as short a time as possible. So shorter time, higher score. So this taps knowledge of part whole relationships, visual modal reasoning skills. It also taps into like just tactile abilities. And so you have to be aware of for certain individuals, someone with like cerebral palsy or dyspraxia or certain other disabilities, this test can capture aspects in a, like, so speed is penalized. So you may find that people, so you have to kind of be mindful of uh, what types of tests are tapping. And when you were to write up your report, you would have to kind of note that the subject has like, or even if they only have like one hand, like things like that, that could impact the score that don't reflect their kind of the, the construct that you're attempting to measure. Symbol search. So this is new to the WACE 3. It appeared in the WISC a little earlier. It's optional. Uh, so subjects are shown two target abstract symbols and asked to determine if each target symbol ap appears in a set of distractor symbols. And so you pretty much just have to find the symbol or say if it's there or not. Um, so do this as many times as possible in two minutes. Shorter times and more correct answers, higher scores. Um, so it taps visual discrimination and processing speed. Again, this is an optional subtest uh, in this version, but it's still available. So scoring these tests, so they're age, the age-adjusted scores are then summed, not the optional subtest, and the sum is compared to the standardized sample for all age groups. ANOVAs, again, don't show a significant age effect. And the idea is that once you adjust for age, you shouldn't have, age should no longer be predictive of score. And if it is predictive of score, so if you were to run a regression or even look at a correlation between raw subject score and age, you should see some kind of association. But once you adjust for age, so say you kind of norm them based on age, you sh there should be no correlation between age and your total score because you've adjusted, you've accounted for age. And if you see one, then something has gone wrong and that your score is not totally age free. Now, um, this results in a performance IQ with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. You sum up the subscales to get this 15, to the, get this 100, um, similar to the verbal. Cool. So the age corrected scores for all non optional subtests are summed, and this gum is used to produce the total full sales, scale score. Um, and so combining, essentially, you've combined the verbal and the performance, and then you have a mean of um, 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Again, to kind of keep them comparable. And so aside from 
the verbal performance and full scale IQ scores, the WACE gives you four more um, measures of ability. And these are made up of summed age corrected subtest scores. So you're given four. Um, so that's seven total. I, I can do math, I swear. Uh, so the verbal comprehension taps, well, I mean, the, thankfully these names are fairly self evident. Um, verbal comprehension, perceptual organization, working memory, and processing speed. And so the working memory has got this ideally freedom from distractibility. Oh, it has, it has some, it has some room to grow in that area. All right, so um, verbal comprehension taps vocab similarities in information. The idea here is that it's a pure measure of verbal abilities, so it doesn't hit the uh, working memory component or the attention related concerns. The idea is that it is independent of those aspects. And so it only uses subscales that only tap the verbal piece. And so a lot of the thinking is that this measures crystallized intelligence. So like one way to think about crystallized is like the, the trivia is not the right word, but it's it's more like the, the knowledge piece, knowledge. <laughs> um, so like just the like facts that you know i kind of view this as like the trivia part um now for perception organization this taps um picture completion block design and matrix reasoning and this measures fluid intelligence so that's the ability to like move all the pieces together now this also taps into attention to detail as well as visual modal motor integr integration so it has a little bit more to it than just fluid but that's what they're trying to tap. Last, we've got um, working memory and processing speed. Also, uh, just a reminder, these are the Microsoft defaults, and they give me great joy. <laughs> uh, so working memory is kind of the product of arithmetic uh, subscore, which is more of a, like a word problem-y thing, uh, digit span, and letter number sequencing. And so on the WISC, this if you uh, remove the letter number sequencing, creates the same kind of index score, the, that score, so essentially like the arithmetic and digit span uh, is called freedom of from distractibility. And the idea is that it measures active working memory. Last, we got processing speed, and this is the uh, digit symbol coding in the symbol search, and this measures your ability to solve problems under the constraints of time time based. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to cut this off here. 12 slides. It's about 17 minutes. I'm going to render them. It takes about twice as long to render as it does record and then twice as long to upload as it does to render. So you'll see these eventually. And uh, I'll probably be recording on a different computer so that I can keep uh, these kind of flowing. Thanks, everybody.